we are already discussing about the basic features of the 8085 uh, microprocessor. So now we will go for the 8085 architecture. It is internal architecture. So there will be the different blocks, okay? And some of the blocks are look like this in this a bidirectional manner, and some of the blocks is looks like the in, in a unidirectional manner, okay? So before starting the architecture. I will first of all speaking on some things new to this one. There should be the different blocks like timing and control unit, arithmetic logic unit, this is an internal bus and these are the bidirectional bus. Okay. So when you uh, in your exam, when you go for the 8085 architecture or 8085 internal block diagram, then you first from identify that it is a 8 bit internal data bus. Then from the left hand side before starting the all this thing you first start the accumulator acc here it stands for the accumulator here it is written as 8 8 means the it is a memory capacity or it is a 8 bit okay so accumulator used for the general purpose and also some of the times in the special purpose so accumulator is everything is related to the memory all those operation goes to the anu I means arithmetic and logic unit. Okay. So what is the function of ALU? ALU means the arithmetic and logic unit means all arithmetical operation like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and the logical operation like and or not and also the XOR operation, all the logic operation done in the ALU. Before coming the ALU, all the data coming to the accumulator and goes to the ALU. Then what should be the function of this register? So this register is known as a temporary register. If the accumulator is a full or ALU is in busy, so some of the data are hold in the temporary register. After temporary register, then goes to the ALU. And when the result will be processed, after processing the result, then the value or data stored to the accumulator. Okay. So it goes through the flag register. Flag register means what? It is a 8-bit registers. This flag register have the five flags we have discussed later on uh, for the specially flag registers. Okay, but the purpose of this flag register is that to uh, in ALU the which data have we have processed in there there is how many number of ones either it is odd or even if the result it is in uh, sign number maybe it is in positive or negative or it is the carry will be generated or not these types of uh, monitoring function in the flag registers okay after uh, cross it you go for the instruction register because we put in the instruction in the programs then these instruction are coming to the instruction register basically it is also 8 bit registers after that the instruction registers goes to this block this is known as the instruction decoder and a machine cycle encoding what is the function of the instruction decoder First of all, the instruction are coming to this instruction register. Then you have to decode this instruction. Okay, so you decode this instruction. So that's why you need an instruction decoder. After that, you all these you transfer to the machine level language or machine cycle. Like it is a zero, one, all these things. So it is a machine cycle encoding. After processing the instruction decoder and machine cycle encoding, all these goes to the timing and control unit. Okay, so. This one is the timing and control unit. Before starting the timing and control unit, you go for the power supply unit. This one is the power supply unit. It is a plus 5 volt and it is a ground. It is required for the 8085 operation. Okay. So next one is the timing and control unit. This one is the timing and control unit. So from this left, these two pins X1 and X2, it is known as a clock generator. Clock generator for what? Clock generator for the 8085 itself. Okay, so there is a crystal, so crystal generate the frequency, after that it goes through the processor with the help of X1 and X2. Next one is a clock out, if the processor, uh, the clock signal is already generated for the X1 X2, if the processor needs to communicate with any types of peripherals, with any types of device, through this one it is known as a clock out, clock out it is means that the clock frequency or uh, clock for the external device. So next one is pin, uh, next one is signal is for the ready. Ready means what? If it is goes for the 
asynchronous level of data transfer it is level of the asynchronous data transfer means what if the processor speed is mismatched with the uh, different device where the data should be transmitted uh, or data uh, to, to be transmitted so that means that suppose we are transmitting the data from processor like it is p to the m external device it is e but the speed of this one and this one is not matched so it is asynchronous data transfer so when you go for the asynchronous data transfer that means this ready signal is to be in the scenery next one is the rd bar and wr bar what do you mean by the rd bar and wr bar rd bar stands for the read and wr bar stands for the write these two signal have the bar so it is a active low signal read operation we use for the rd bar and write operation we use for the write bar ale signal we will discuss later on from this section okay so another two signal is the s0 and s1 s0 s1 is used for the status which status the different status are in s0 and s1 is like that opcode fetch or fetch decode that be next one is a memory read memory write io read io write these types of signals okay next one is the io slash m bar io slash m bar means is a single pin or single function where we use the both signals if it is high or one if you input as a one in the io then it is go for the input output if you input as zero it is go for the memory okay so it is io slash m bar next one is the hold and hold acknowledgement it is used for the dma operation direct memory access access we will discuss on the next uh, uh, few videos uh, in the dm section okay so hold means what if you go for the dma operation then the instruction goes to the processor to hold this operation and after hold the uh, then processor uh, communicate with the external device with the hld hold acknowledgement that means it is hold next one is a reset in reset means what and another one is a reset out so these two pins are those signals are a reset signals okay so reset signal means what if the device r goes to if the device goes to reset option then it's itself that means that self option is reset in if the device goes to reset to the external device so it is a reset out option okay so next one is a memory band or register band this one is a register band okay so in this register you have first of all you have seen that is a mux or multiplexer after the sum there is a two register is known as also temporary register w and z but we use the general purpose register here this one b c d e h a there is a six register each register has a content eight bits of information so each one is eight bit information this one carries eight bit information this one this one and this one this one if you require the 16 bit of information then you have to collaborate this one only that means the b c p r not like this b d it is restricted by the intel so it is a d e p r it is an hl pair so if you require for the 16 bit operation then you go for the bc pair d pair hl pair not bd pair not d pair like this one okay then if you are uh, required in 8 bit operation so only you choose it b c d e h l because this six register is basically 8 bit register content of each okay so after that there is a two special purpose register which are known as a stack pointer this one is a 16 bit register this one also 16 bit register those function of the stack pointer is in which line the program will executing it holds the data okay and the, what is the purpose of the program counter program counter means the next instruction or next line to be executed by the processor suppose these are the lines so these line are executing okay so these are these address hold by the stack pointer and this line to be executed to to the completing this instruction so this address is hold by the program counter this one is a stack okay and some of the other function of the stack included there so we will discuss in the when we go for the stack pointer only then we will discuss of this okay so next one is the incrementer and decrementer address slash this one incrementer and decrementer address slash what do you mean by the incrementer and decrementer address slash suppose we are going through the memory of 2000 so after that the memory should be increased in 2001 either this one or 
if you are in 2002 and go for the 2001 then this one is the decrementing operation and this one is the incrementing operation so for this types of memory operation this one is needed incremental or decremental address latch and there is a two option this option only address buffer and this option is a data and address buffer in previous video i, I was discussed about the, the multiplexing of data bus and address bus where we define that a8 to a15 this one is 8 bit and ad0 to ad7 this one also 8 bit okay so in this one a8 to a15 is a higher order address bus so that's why the only unidirectional function is there and another one ad0 to ad7 is a multiplex data and address that means it is a conjugation of a0 to a7 and d0 to d7 so it is written as a d0 to a7 so that means it is a multiplex data bus and address bus 8 bit okay so can you can you differentiate with this one either it is a data or it is an address so it is differentiated by a a l e signal which one is previously left okay so a l e signal means what address latch enable when you go for the multiplexing then a d 0 to a d 7 then when you have to understand either the processor can understand either it is a data or it is an address so next time a d 0 to a d 7 there should be the data there should be the information in this line suppose this one is the line so there everyone is the information but why you have how you have to understand either it is a data or it is an address so they will differentiate by the ALE if the ALE signal is high that means all information in this line is known as an address if then all this one in data if the ALE signal goes to low state okay so if ALE is 1 then it is all about the address if it is 0 then it is all about the data okay so these things are over now it is the upper one there is a two unit one is the interrupt control unit and another one is the serial IO control unit okay so in the interrupt control unit interrupt means the processor stopped its normal operation and executed some other instruction so it is the next uh, next video or next two or three videos you will discuss in the this blog also so there is a five interrupt for the 8085 processor rst 7.5 rst 6.5 rst 5.5 and this one is known as the trap okay so these four interrupt is known as a software interrupt and this one is known as the hardware interrupt okay so this one is the interrupt acknowledgement which one coming from the processor okay next one is the serial io control serial input output control which have the two operation one is the sid or serial input data and another one is the serial output data when you incoming for the serial inputs then it is serial input data and when you go for the serial output it is go for the serial output data and strictly used for the serial input output control okay in this video we are discussing about the 8085 internal architecture or internal block diagram and in the next video we are discussing about the pin diagram of 8085 which one basically a 40 pin ic package okay thank you